Okay, everybody, uh, it's still August 20th, 2020. This is Lance. I'm going to say Dr. Lance in this second part of today's video uh, because I'm kind of invoking that side of me. Uh, I just played, for entertainment purposes, a song I love, Pirate Looks at 40 by Jimmy Buffett, and I'm going to title this talk, A Doctor Looks at Pot. Yeah, I'm going there. And there's a specific reason because I was playing a song, I started thinking about an issue I thought about for years and I want to get out there. So in the song, Jimmy talks about, uh, I've done a bit of smuggling. I've run my share of grass. You know, I made enough money to buy my Amy, but I pissed it away so fast. Never meant to last. Right? And everybody who loves Jimmy from the, from the liberal hippie to the, to the redneck beer drinking southern brother of mine. We all love Jimmy, and we, that line, it gives us that little, oh, he's a little pirate, you know, a little outlaw. It's all cool. And why do we think it's cool? Because he's not talking about killing somebody. He's talking about weed. And the vast majority of us, whether you are conservative or liberal, you don't really have a huge problem with weed. Now, some of you legitimately believe in your concerns about it, and you think it's a terrible thing. But I want to address that. Okay, I'm just going to address it straightforwardly from a mostly centrist position. Okay, a couple of disclaimers. I am speaking for me, me only. These are my observations and not any artist, Jimmy Buffett, Willie Nelson, Hank Williams Jr., and they all endorse it. Just saying. Uh, but that, these aren't their views. These are my views. Okay. Next, I have never smoked a joint. I have never voluntarily ingested or inhaled any form of cannabis. I made a promise to myself way back in early high school and I kept it. Maybe when I'm old and retired, the Navy can't test me anymore because I'm a Navy reservist. Uh, when my, I don't care about my physician license or anything. Maybe I'll in, invoke it and live my days all chilled out and relaxed like Willie Nelson, but I have never done it. I had one accidental ingestion one time. I hated it, hated the way I felt, didn't like it, wouldn't recommend it, won't, don't want to do it again. I was scared out of my mind I was going to get drug tested randomly and have consequences. Thank goodness I didn't. Thank goodness. Next disclaimer is I'm going towards the decriminalization argument, but I am only talking about from a government and legal perspective. I am not endorsing that organizations can't still have their own policies, military, corporation, whatever, but I don't want criminal charges coming out of that, even from the military, and I've dealt with it as an officer, but it's one thing to be turned away or fired. It's another to have a criminal record that, that follows you. I don't want government telling companies what they can do and the military has to make its own decisions. But in terms of sending people to jail, creating a criminal record, all that I can't, I can't go with. So let's start with the medical side, okay? Uh, I, I'm a fan, board certified family physician, board certified in hyperbaric medicine. I'm a wound care doc. I've been a hospice doc. I did five years of emergency medicine. I did shock trauma in the Iraq. I'm a flight surgeon and a diving medical officer. I, for the Navy, everything. Think, you know how much trauma and disease I've seen from pot? Like none. Like literally all the destruction from alcohol, motor vehicle crashes, families dying because some jerk got drunk and drove his car head into him on the highway. I've, I've put, I've saved the life of a 12 year old who would have died five minutes later. I've seen a guy with a hatchet in his head because his wife was drunk. I've seen people scalp. One lady came in with half of her arm off because of alcohol related domestic violence. And that's terrible, but it's still legal. We still give people that freedom. Disease from alcohol cirrhosis of the liver, cancer of the esophagus, ascites, fluid in the belly from a cirrhotic liver. I've drained liters and liters of fluids, all these guys over and over again, but we still allow people to self-destruct with it. Cigarettes, tobacco, are you kidding me? The amount of self-destruction that's legal with that, but we tax it, we make some money off of it. And marijuana, I've never seen even close to, not even in the same universe of destruction, both to other people or to the self that, that, that those substances can cause. I've seen a few worried moms bringing their kids, teenagers in the ER in the middle of the night want a drug test, which we wouldn't do, but it was worry about the problem. It wasn't the problem. Just 
just terrible. And then on a medical basis, look, I can prescribe enough opioids, you know, morphine, whatever, either because pain or because of end of life, hospice care, or um, benzodiazepines, sedatives like Ativan and Xanax. I can prescribe a Valium. I can prescribe enough of that to kill an elephant. But I got a friend, her mom died of cancer, and I was the, I, I helped accompany that situation. The mom turned, decided to start smoking marijuana at the end of her life, and she had less pain requirements. It was a more peaceful passing. God bless her. And we could, it, we just, you know, it was quiet. You know, the hospice turned a blind eye, whatever. Let her be, for goodness sake. Do I, but do I, am I saying it only medical use? No, medical use, and everybody decriminalized this on a rational basis. We are paying to enforce for the court costs and for the incarceration of all these people. We are paying instead of collecting tax money. And because it's still illegal in a lot of places, the cartels, the gangs, and the organized crime are profiting. The states that have legalized it appear to be doing pretty well financially with it. Maybe you got a few more people hanging out looking stoned on the street, but you don't have people in jail getting hardened, learning how to traffic hard drugs or making connections for larceny and such. So I'll take a few more stoners around than more hardened criminals. And I also just don't want to pay for that. I want the money coming in the right direction. But let's talk about another issue. And, you know, we've had some racial tensions lately. I'm not totally with the left. I'm certainly not totally with the right. I try to be in the center and I try to stay reasonable. But um, if, you, if you think about it, now you don't want anybody going to jail for no good reason, having their life ruined. But if you do go to jail, and especially if you are maybe not well grounded in society, or maybe you've had a few other minor charges, uh, you go to jail you, and, and you're a minority black person, you're probably more likely to go to jail. I mean, that's what the evidence is pretty clearly saying. You probably gonna get a longer sentence. And when you come out, what opportunity are you gonna have? How are you going to land a job? How are you gonna turn your life around and be a contributing productive citizen? Crime is gonna be more and more the option that keeps food on your table. And that's not good. And it's not fair. It's not right. I mean, the, the data does, that I've seen clearly says that the, the rates are disparate. I mean, think about it. I'm, you know, professional white guy. I decide I'm going to carry a bag of weed or maybe I'm going to sell it to my friends. The odds of me getting caught are low. But if I did get caught, the odds of me really getting in trouble are probably pretty low. And then I got the resources to hire a nice lawyer. And it might be that my second cousin twice removed is the assistant solicitor down at the courthouse in Buford or, or Birmingham or Raleigh. And I'm like, you know, okay, sorry, don't do that again. Shh. Okay, but let, let's say I'm just, you know, just past the juvenile age. I'm not growing up in, uh, in a nice neighborhood. I don't have the connections or I just don't look like me. Maybe I get a public defender and maybe they say, look, you know, you, they caught you. We don't have the resources to fight this. Just just admit you're guilty. 18 months instead of five to seven years. You get out. You, it's on your record, but, you know, you'll be out soon. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll do, I'll do that. I'll take it. Right. But when you get out, hey, I, I, I want a job. I want to go back to school. I want to join the military. I, I want to join the police force. I want to be a teacher. You got any record? Yeah, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm better now. We don't. Sorry. And then what you gonna do for a living? What you know? I think I think you don't have to see a study. I mean, we all know the common sense is if if you gotta if you gotta make a living, you gotta get some money in your pocket. You're gonna do what you know makes money, and that's gonna put you back in the same cycle. And it might be more violent this time, or maybe there'll be maybe there'll be gunfire over a drug deal gone bad, and it goes off and it hits that little girl on the side of the road. I, I mean, you know, this cycle, is, there's nothing surprising here and, and you don't have to do an elaborate study just to think it through. It's not right. We got to do better. The final issue is now it is legal in some places. Marijuana is legal in some places or cannabis and you got people 
usually going to look like me. And they're wearing a tie and they're forming LLCs and they're making dispensaries or distribution networks and they're executives and they're being well paid. Okay, fine. I would rather that than the criminal activity, but there's people in jail for the same thing. We got to get these people out. If we're going to legalize it, which we should, we also need to look backwards a bit. Yes, they committed a crime, and yes, it was a nothing crime. And maybe some of the money we get from taxing it for a few years, we use to help these people get back on their feet, educate, train. Heck, if they want to work legally in the marijuana, at least help. Because it wasn't really right for them to go to jail in the first place. You know, the historians tell us, and I tend to believe it, that some of our Prohibition or fear of marijuana comes from uh, some sources we don't want to admit. Some of it comes from the old Southern fear of the reefer madness among the Negro, and that it's going to incite them to to attack our Southern bells and steal their. You know what I'm saying, and whether you believe that or not, it's still wrong to ruin lives over this. People aren't turning into reefer madness crazies. And even if they, some do, they're getting it anyway. Let's keep people out of jail. Let's get some money for this stuff. And let's remember too, some of the political hypocrisy. Now the left has already kind of embraced this. And the libertarians should as well, because the freedom, and the freedom loving conservatives should as well, but the conservative movement right now is not supporting this as much. Now, if you really, really, for religious reasons, or you, you haven't done it, you just can't get behind it, okay, I can respect that. But I'm going to challenge my conservative friends of goodwill and conscience. If you have ever used it, someone you care about has used it, seen it being used, your friends, whatever, and you didn't get busted, or you got busted and you got off light and you're still able to get a job and all that, and you don't support, actively support, you can vote for whoever you want to, but once they're in office, write letters, let them know it's time for this to change or support those movements of change. If you don't do that, that is the highest form of hypocrisy. I mean, look, Hank Williams Jr., man, I mean, come on. You know what he was singing about, and you know what he was doing. He was leading all kinds of young people into partying, making a ton of money. So this needs to be a bipartisan issue, and we just need to put this one behind us once and for all. You know, we got this debate now, you know, defund the police, and, and are the police, whose side are they on, whatever. Well, let's at least take away the conflict between the police and the citizens and the community over this issue. We just don't need to fight this battle. We don't need to fight this battle. Come on, y'all. It's to, This one's past due. Let's decriminalize marijuana. Let's just do it. All right, thanks for listening. Don't hate me. I'm trying to represent. I'm trying to be fair. If you don't like what I'm saying, okay, but have a good reason not to like it. Not just dogma. Okay, and uh, anyway, peace out. Hope everybody's doing as good as you can with COVID. And uh, maybe when I'm older and retired, don't have to worry about urine drug screens. I'll join you and we'll roll me up and smoke me when I die. That's Willie Nelson. And he sits in between because, you know, both sides love Willie. <sighs> it's all over our culture and we've put people in jail for it. <sighs> all right, take care.